My fiancé is a graduate student and always says that research is exhausting. She only sees me once every one or two weeks and only gives herself to me once every two or three months. I sympathize with her, working overtime to support her PhD studies. Until one day, while I was on a business trip, I saw a video of her in the car club group. The video title was, A Woman Who Likes to Play with Contrasts. Big Cravings. I was stunned. In the video, my fiancé was telling the men to blur her face, but the men was filming her face from above. Chapter 1. The video was only 20 seconds long. Looking at my fiancé's flushed face, I was completely stunned. I couldn't believe it was real, yet I had to believe it. In the video, on the familiar nightstand, there was a photo of me and my fiancé. Though my face was obscured by the angle, my fiancé was cheating in the house I bought for our marriage, on the bed I bought for our marriage. Once I came to my senses, I immediately recorded the video and saved the information from the car club group. Just after I finished, the video was retracted. In the days that followed, I muddled through until my business trip ended. This time, I didn't tell her I was coming back in advance. After returning to the city, I went straight to the house and dug out the hidden cameras in the bedroom. When I was renovating, I heard that workers might cut corners, so I installed a few cameras. Ironically, the workers were honest, but my fiancé was not. The cameras I bought had a power-off monitoring function, only recording of the process, but it was enough. 40 minutes. For 40 minutes, my fiancé who usually complained of being tired and unmoved in front of me, was full of energy and tried all sorts of things. This is the house my husband bought for us. We rarely come here. You're the first man to come here. The men laughed. Am I your first man? One person can't satisfy your cravings. You're annoying. I said you're the first man to come here. You're really bold. Your husband is watching you in the photo. Isn't it more thrilling? I don't love him at all. But his family has money and he's willing to spend it on me. So I keep him around. You're the only one I love. My anger ignited instantly. So she never loved me. I was just of her game. A prop for her thrills. This bitch. I don't know how many times she's cheated on me. At the end of the video, I heard my fiancé say, Teacher, let's rest for a while and go again. Chapter 2. Teacher. I don't really know much about my fiancé's social circle. I'm usually very busy. Traveling for work. Working overtime. Making money. But she seems even busier than me. Every time I have a break and schedule a date, she comes and goes in a hurry. She tells me she wants to produce more research results, get her PhD, and make more money to support me in the future. I believed her, deeply moved, even blaming myself for not being hardworking enough, thinking I was causing her suffering. I didn't realize she didn't love me at all. She only stayed with me because I was willing to spend money on her. It seems I was just a tool for her, kept around when useful and discarded when not. I sat in the room, staring blankly at everything around me, because my fiancé didn't want a second-hand house. I bought a new one in full because my fiancé didn't like the developer's décor, I paid for a complete renovation, because my fiancé wanted a sense of security, I agreed to add her name to the property deed, because I loved her deeply, I agreed to all her conditions one by one, I didn't expect that not only did she not love me, but she also brought other men into our home, this home I painstakingly prepared for our happiness. Suddenly, I felt disgusted by everything in the house, I picked up our photo, shouting at her in the picture, Willow Sue, why are you doing this to me, why? The more I shouted, the crazier I became, with many thoughts of killing flashing through my mind. Looking at her cold face in the photo, recalling her appearance in the video, my thoughts of killing grew stronger. I wanted to skin them, dismember them, and scatter their ashes. Until I threw down the photo and rushed out of the room, the cold wind outside suddenly cleared my mind. There's no need to end up in jail for such a person. I want to get back at her, not kill her. Chapter 3 I captured a screenshot of the man's face accidentally revealed in the video and then searched on my fiancé's school's official website. After a few hours of searching, I found the man. It turns out this man is not only a teacher at the school but also a member of the school's basketball association. On the website, there was a group photo from an award ceremony, which included this man and my fiancé. It seems my fiancé wasn't just focused on research. If it weren't for this photo, I wouldn't have known she could play basketball. I took a screenshot of the man's award photo and posted it on the school forum. Wow. This teacher is so handsome. Can anyone tell me which faculty he's from? In half a day, I found out this man's name is Ken Wong, a teacher in the foreign languages dement, unmarried. Many comments on the post said, Junior, liking him is a disaster. You'll have to wait in line and get hurt. As more comments poured in, I gradually learned more about Ken. It turns out Ken is a prominent figure at the school, skilled in basketball, leading the school team to many victories and many female students have been infatuated with him. This scumbag, pretending to be a respectable teacher, but in reality, accepting all comers, using the guise of love to mess with many female students, 
I registered a new account, pretending to be a female student he deceived, and accused him of secretly filming videos. Soon, the post went viral. Many comments followed, with everyone eagerly gossiping. Gradually, other victims also came forward, accusing Ken of being a master of time management, seamlessly juggling girlfriends, and denying everything after using them. Some enthusiastic individuals even edited the post into a video and posted it on social media. For a while, the online discussions were intense, and Ken's personal information was dug out. Ken nearly went crazy when he found out. He sent a private message to my account, Who the hell are you? What do you want? I'll sue you for defamation. I laughed and replied, You are the one a woman who likes to play with contrasts. You trash. Willow, is that you? Did you see it? Where did you see it? You bastard. I told you to blur my face, and you didn't. You scum. After cursing him out, I deleted the account. Now, with everyone spreading the gossip, I don't need to push it further. Ken, you want to sue me? I'll let you and that cheating fiancé of mine tear each other a first. Chapter 4 The next day, I called my fiancé, telling her I was back and that I missed her, inviting her out for dinner. On the phone, she sounded irritated, constantly brushing me off. I've been so busy lately. Exhausted. Let's meet another day. I guessed Ken must have given her some trouble but this only made me more eager to see her in person. To assess the situation, I had no choice but to use my trump card, baby. My dad told me that the demolition compensation from our hometown came through. He wants me to discuss with you how to spend it. This tactic worked like a charm. Willow's tone instantly brightened. The compensation finally came through. We should celebrate. Let's have dinner at Ujishi Cuisine tonight. This woman is ruthless. That place costs over 3,000 per person. The compensation was real. My parents bought land in our hometown's capital years ago to build a factory. As the city expanded, the suburban factory became of the new urban development area. Although our factory was included in the demolition and relocation plan years ago, the compensation was delayed until now, totaling 34 million. Willow knew about this. She had asked me indirectly about it several times when the compensation was delayed. She probably agreed to marry me because of this money. In the evening, I met my fiancé. She usually showed up barefaced and simply dressed, but this time she came heavily made up and carefully dressed. She was more beautiful than before, but I only found her repulsive. Looking closely, I could see a faint bruise on her cheekbone. Ken had hit her, feigning enthusiasm. I rushed over, deliberately squeezing her cheeks hard with both hands. Baby, I missed you so much. You're so beautiful. She grimaced in pain, quickly prying my hands away. Oh, you're messing up my makeup. How could I mess up your makeup? I deliberately pinched her face a few more times. She hissed in pain, and I felt a dark satisfaction. While the bruises could be covered with foundation, the pain could not be hidden. I guessed Willow had at least received two slaps from Ken. How much was the demolition compensation? How much will your dad give you? My fiancé got straight to the point. My dad didn't tell me the exact amount, but they said everything would be to your satisfaction. You know how much my parents love you as their daughter-in-law. I painted a big picture for her, and my parents too. You have to satisfy them or they won't feel comfortable letting me marry you. And don't forget my sister. Don't worry. I'll make sure your whole family is satisfied. You go back and discuss it with them. See what their demands are. I patted my chest, making grand promises. Husband is the best. I stared at my fiancé's delicate face, growing more furious the longer I looked. But I kept flattering her. Baby, didn't you say you wanted to start your own business? Now I have the money to support you. Starting a business is expensive. You have to be prepared for that. Don't be stingy. I can't believe you said that. All these years, have I ever been stingy with you? I put on a hurt expression. All right. All right. My bad. Don't go back to your dorm tonight. I'll reward you. She smiled sweetly, trying to soothe me. Damn. Disgusting. I didn't want to touch her at all. Feigning regret. I said. Really? But I got a message from my boss. I have to work overtime tonight. You're working so hard. Why not just quit? I still want to buy you bags with my salary. Okay then. Finish dinner and go back to the office early. She didn't try to persuade me to stay. When you get paid, remember to take me shopping. Bitch. Even now you're thinking about my money? I fake smiled, continuing to promise her the moon. Don't worry. You can spend my whole paycheck this month. As soon as I got back, Willow sent me a list. Chapter 5. Her dad wanted a Mercedes SUV. Her mom wanted a set of jade jewelry. And her sister wanted branded bags. She also said she wanted to marry me as soon as possible and asked how much dowry I could give. Damn it. I estimated that without the dowry, the things they wanted would cost at least a million. This family really took me for a sucker. While dealing with her, I reported Ken. By this time, Ken's issues had spread from the school forum to the entire social media. Netizens had escalated from criticizing Ken's lack of morality to condemning the entire school. I collected all the online reports about Ken, organized the victim's timelines and related evidence, and made a detailed chart. 
I sent a copy of this chart to the school's email and posted another online. Additionally, I summarized the school's various issues and sent them to the Education Bureau. I got a new phone number and called the mayor's hotline to complain about the university's improper teaching conduct, condoning teachers to deceive and secretly film female students, and spreading videos. I also told them that detailed information was sent to the Education Bureau's email. Soon, both the mayor's hotline and the Education Bureau replied that they would thoroughly investigate the matter. That's it. With online public opinion raging and offline reports, Ken was suspended. I had someone keeping an eye on him. As soon as I got the news, I quickly took a cab to the school. The timing was perfect. I saw him just as he was leaving the school. Ken was driving out of the school gate when the person I arranged blocked him. The young guy, posing as a college student, rode a bike straight into Ken's car. In a bad mood, Ken got out of the car and yelled, Are you blind? Can you afford to pay for hitting my car? The hot-blooded young man wasn't backing down, and they started yelling at each other. Seeing the crowd of students growing, I hid in the back and shouted, isn't this the teacher who sleeps with students, so arrogant. The students immediately got riled up, holy crap, it's him, this scumbag, wasn't he supposed to be suspended? The young guy took the opportunity to shout, yes, it's him, he slept with my classmate and won't admit it, now he wants to run. With a leader, the crowd of students boiled over, all criticizing and cursing Ken, who still defiantly yelled back, then someone shouted, beat him up, and the young guy rushed forward, Ken, being tall punched the young man in the chest, who then fell to the ground, screaming, the pervert teacher hit me. The students were enraged and swarmed, university students, full of vigor, didn't hold back, Ken, strong and athletic, fought back a bit at first but was soon kicked in the knees, collapsing to the ground, before long, Ken was beaten black and blue, unable to stop himself from begging loudly, students, I was wrong, please stop hitting me, I, wearing a mask, ran up and kicked him in the face, silencing him. Damn it, that's for sleeping in my bed. Campus security hurried over, fearing someone might get killed, and shouted, We've called the police, stop hitting him. The students and I dispersed, leaving Ken lying on the ground groaning. He curled up with his hands over his head, covered in footprints, looking utterly pathetic. The security guards helped him up and asked if he wanted to call the police. Ken shook his head painfully and struggled back to his car. He wouldn't dare call the police with his own dirty secrets. Chapter 6 That Night I received a message from Willow saying that her parents wanted to come and discuss our wedding. They wanted to lock me down early. Don't worry. I'll make sure uncle and auntie are satisfied with our marriage plans. But my parents are traveling abroad and can't meet them in person. My parents indeed went abroad for a vacation. They've worked hard all their lives and deserve to enjoy themselves. It's okay. My parents said they'll come to Beijing first to see you. Alright. I readily agreed. I'm on a business trip tomorrow and will be back the day after tomorrow. You settle uncle and auntie in first and I'll entertain them properly when I return. After sending the message, I felt a mix of emotions. Willow and I didn't attend the same school. I met her during a cross-school event in my freshman year. At that time, Willow was beautiful, cold, and outstanding, a high-profile figure who caught many boys' attention. I fell in love with her at first sight and tried various ways to pursue her for three years, but she always remained indifferent. Before graduation, on Willow's birthday, I decided to seize the last chance and planned an elaborate confession ceremony. My parents had always supported my feelings, especially since Willow had an academic aura. They helped me book a manor in the suburbs and invited friends from both sides. I even spent tens of thousands to rent a helicopter, bringing a bouquet and diamond necklace from the sky, walking towards Willow with deep affection. In her shocked and astonished gaze, I kneeled on one knee and sincerely confessed my love to her. I had prepared for failure, thinking if it didn't work out, this ceremony would be my farewell to youth. Unexpectedly, she agreed. Amid the cheers of our friends, I personally put the diamond necklace on her. For the first time, she gave me a shy smile and hugged me. Actually, I've had a good impression of you for a long time. At that moment, I felt like the happiest person in the world. Looking back now, I was really stupid. If she truly liked me, how could she remain indifferent for three years? She agreed only when I spent money. If I hadn't flaunted my wealth with that birthday why, she wouldn't have become my girlfriend. I was too young to see through the true nature of a gold digger. After graduating from college, she got into a graduate program in Beijing. For her, I gave up returning to my family business and found a job in Beijing. It was then that I took her home to meet my parents. Being their only son, my parents doted on me and never opposed me dating. Seeing Willow, who was beautiful, well-mannered, and highly educated, they were very pleased. Willow then took me to her hometown, a small county in the north. Her parents were very satisfied when they saw the carload of gifts I brought. Later, our parents met, and we got engaged. All her expenses for graduate school naturally fell on me. My parents, loving their son, 
and with our good financial situation, coupled with Willow's ability to act obediently in front of them, made sure to spare no expense for my future. Otherwise, how could I afford to buy a house in Beijing with my salary alone? Unfortunately, I let my parents down. The daughter-in-law I found for them turned out to be a harmful fraud. Now, looking back, there were signs all along. I was just blinded by love. Thinking about it, I felt an increasing hatred. Willow, you could have rejected me, but I will never forgive you for using and deceiving me like this. Chapter 7 To continue with my plan for revenge, I patiently entertained her family. I didn't buy anything on Willow's list. Using the excuse that there wasn't enough time and that we'd include everything with the dowry at the wedding, she probably didn't want to push me too hard either. So she didn't say much. After two glasses of premium wine, Willow's dad got tipsy and pointed at me, saying, Jorge, we're very happy that you have this intention. My daughter has been cherished all her life, never had to suffer. She's also very ambitious, a graduate student from a prestigious university. Marrying her means your future children can also go to prestigious universities. I nodded repeatedly, hinting at my words. Uncle, you're absolutely right. Willow is indeed smart and ambitious. You wouldn't think she's so capable just by looking at her. Let me toast to you again. Her mom then asked, without meeting your parents. I don't know what your family thinks. Although things are modern now, the dowry is still a matter of face. Jorge, can you make the decision? Auntie, no problem. My parents said that the family money will be mine sooner or later. Such a big event as marriage, I can decide as I please. Taking advantage of the alcohol, I prepared to paint a grand picture. Her mom continued, my daughter is so beautiful and excellent, and she will be a doctoral student from a prestigious university in the future. This is not an average family's daughter-in-law, don't you think? Her dad and I have raised her with great care for so many years. It's really hard to let go of her suddenly. Do you understand? Auntie, say no more. I understand very well. My family is prepared to offer a dowry of one million. Auntie, what do you think? The dinner table fell silent. With my fiancé's family staring at me, her dad was so excited that he spilled his wine. How? How much? Both her parents were just regular workers. Willow once said their lifetime savings were only about 300,000. One million was astronomical to them. One million dowry. Uncle, this should surely give you face back home. Right, I said firmly. Her dad's eyes widened instantly. Definitely. Willow obviously didn't expect me to be so generous. Her eyes were glowing as she grabbed my hand. Honey, are you sure you're not drunk? Will your parents agree to this much money? I subtly avoided her closeness and waved grandly. Don't worry. My parents' money is my money. I chased you for so many years to make you happy. My parents bought an 8 million house. They won't care about this dowry. Willow's face almost split with joy. I knew you were a man with potential. Honey, you're the best. Dad. Mom. Did I choose the right person? Yes. Yes. Her parents nodded quickly. We knew from the first sight that Jorge is a good kid. Reliable. Brother-in-law. Where's my bag? Her sister interjected. Don't worry. Your brother-in-law will buy it for you. I'll take you to choose one later. Agreeing doesn't cost anything. Thank you, brother-in-law. Her sister said sweetly. Looking at the joyful family, I sneered inwardly. I'm putting you on a pedestal now, but will you still be able to laugh when I bring you crashing down? You're not young either. Look at your sister. You should find a capable husband like your brother-in-law. I heard her parents whisper to her sister. Her sister glanced at Willow with blatant jealousy. Willow leaned in and whispered in my ear. Honey, let's sleep in the wedding house tonight. Looking at her flushed face, I suddenly felt disgusted. Not wanting to refuse directly, I smiled and agreed. Later, I deliberately challenged her dad to a drinking contest until we both vomited. Under her mother's direction, Willow came to help me, but as I expected, she threw me into the hotel room with a look of disgust and left. Chapter 8 I was woken up by a call from the hotel phone. Groggy. I picked up the phone, and Sandra's crisp voice came through. Brother-in-law, are you up yet? When are you taking me to buy the bag? I woke up completely and had an idea. Wait a moment. I'll wash up and then take you. Okay, I'll come over to your room. Shortly after, there was a knock on my door. As soon as I opened the door, Sandra with a face full of innocence, threw herself into my arms, brother-in-law. She was dressed up today, wearing a tight, short camisole dress that highlighted her curves and made her long, snow-white legs stand out. Before I could push her away, she linked her arm through mine with a naive look, brother-in-law, did you just wake up? Should I get you some breakfast? Or should we eat together later? I knew very well why she was being so attentive. This Sioux family really produces bad seeds, each daughter more shameless and money-minded than the other. Sandra three years younger than Willow, was also very pretty but not as academically inclined. She graduated from a vocational school and worked as a cashier back in their hometown. But when it comes to sweet talking, she was way ahead of Willow. As I was washing up, she kept chattering beside me, brother-in-law, it's so annoying. Last night my parents kept comparing me to my sister, 
I just broke up, and you and my sister are getting married, and you have so much money. How will I ever find a boyfriend? Brother-in-law, can you introduce me to someone? I may not be as educated, but I think I'm prettier than my sister. Brother-in-law, am I prettier than my sister? Hearing her ask that, I turned around and said, You're much more lively than your sister, bright and cute. Sandra giggled coquettishly, exuding youthful energy and vitality. When did your sister leave? I asked knowingly. Um, she left after bringing you to the hotel. Brother-in-law, you're heavy. It took a lot of effort to get you into bed. Then I should thank you. I intentionally patted her head and posted a message on my moments. Thanks to little sister Eva for taking care of me. Taking her to buy a bag now. I took her to SKP. Once in the mall, Sandra's eyes lit up. And she started taking photos in front of luxury stores with her phone. Noticing people staring at her. She quickly ran back to me. Linking her arm through mine and pressing her body close. I must admit. Walking around with a little beauty does feel good. Sandra enthusiastically browsed through the stores while I checked my phone and saw that Willow had indeed responded to my post, where are you guys? She couldn't contain herself. I smiled and ignored her. Refreshing again. I saw Sandra had posted a collage of nine photos. The caption read, shopping with the best brother-in-law in the world. He's more charming than the bags. She added a string of little hearts at the end. The photos included store shots, selfies, and a picture of her linking arms with me with the location tagged. Sandra was quick. In such a short time, she had taken so many photos. A true ally. Before long, Willow called. What are you doing with my sister? What else? Buying her a bag. Are you buying her a bag right now? Did your dad's money come through? No, but I still have my salary. She was begging, and I figured since I have to buy it eventually, might as well take her shopping now. You promised your salary would buy me a bag. Willow's voice suddenly became sharp. How can you spend that money on her? Didn't you tell me not to forget your sister? I enjoyed seeing her angry. I've already bought you so many bags. Can't you let Eva have this one? This completely enraged Willow, who began screaming hysterically. Why should I let her? Jorge, you're putting her before me. Are you into her now? Come back right now. Before I could respond, Sandra suddenly snatched the phone from me, speaking softly. Brother-in-law, let me explain to my sister. I was happy to watch the drama unfold and didn't stop her. Sure enough. Sandra began her manipulative talk. Sister, why do you always get mad at brother-in-law for no reason? He works so hard all the time. We'll be a family soon. And if you don't care about brother-in-law, I. She shyly glanced at me. Dad and mom care about him. Willow was evidently furious. I could hear her shrill voice clearly. Sandra, do you have no shame? Do you want everything I have? Just wait. Sandra sweetly replied. Sister, don't be so angry. Anger makes you age faster. Don't worry. I'll take good care of brother-in-law for you. After saying that, Sandra hung up the phone, ignoring Willow's furious shouts. The drama between these two sisters was quite a show. Brother-in-law, don't be angry. My sister has a temper like a dog's. She's been like this since we were kids. Quick to turn on you. Mom always says she's got a dog's face. Sandra grabbed my hand. Brother-in-law, don't be mad. Let me buy you coffee to cool down. Chapter 9. In the coffee shop, I sat shoulder to shoulder with Sandra. We're going to be family soon. Shouldn't I be nicer to you? I asked, feigning confusion. Does your sister really need to get so angry? This tactic worked perfectly. Sandra fumed. My sister has never liked me, brother-in-law. It's not my place to say, but you've spoiled her too much. You've indulged her to the point of bad habits. I agreed with her. I used to love Willow so much that I lost myself, giving her the opportunity to humiliate me like that. Now, I'm going to make her pay back tenfold, a hundredfold. I stared at Sandra's face for a long time until her cheeks turned red then sighed. If only your sister were half as understanding as you. My sister has high aspirations and a strong career drive. Unlike me, I just want to find a good husband and live a happy life. I bowed my head thoughtfully and sighed softly. What a pity. But your sister has been with me for so many years. Sigh, brother-in-law. Sandra leaned in gently. Actually, you don't have to be so responsible towards my sister. Maybe there's a better choice. If I, before she could finish, she screamed as someone yanked her by the hair and pulled her aside. Willow had arrived. With two crisp slaps, Willow struck her twice. How dare you hit me? Sandra screamed, clawing at Willow's face wildly. Unfortunately, she didn't have the height advantage and could only bite down hard on Willow's shoulder. The two sisters started fighting fiercely. I watched from the side, gasping. These sisters were ruthless, using deadly moves. Sandra finally broke free from her sister's hold and kicked Willow hard in the stomach. Willow doubled over in pain giving Sandra the opportunity to grab her hair and throw her to the ground. She then straddled her sister and slapped her face repeatedly. I made a half-hearted attempt to intervene, noticing people around taking out their phones to record. I quickly put on a mask and left the coffee shop. I didn't want to end up on trending searches with these lunatics. 
Standing outside, I watched them fight like cats and dogs, quietly took out my phone, and deleted my WeChat moments post with the coffee shop location. Then, I took a cab back to the hotel. Chapter 10 Back at the hotel, I received a call from Willow, demanding, Why did you leave on your own? I couldn't be bothered with her. Why do you think? Because you embarrassed me. With that, I hung up and ignored her. Not long after, I heard her and her sister yelling at each other in the hallway, along with her parents' scolding voices. The real show was about to start. There was a loud knocking on my door, followed by my future father-in-law's voice, Jorge, come out here. I opened the door, and the entire family barged in. Her father, seething with anger, asked, Jorge, what's going on? What's going on? I responded, equally furious, see for yourself. I showed him the trending local video, which was of Willow and Sandra fighting. Money can buy trending topics quickly. The video showed Willow cursing. Shameless. Bitch. Always taking my things since childhood. While hitting Sandra, Sandra burst into tears beside me, and Willow's face turned ashen. I pointed at Willow and yelled. She was like a madwoman today. I was just taking her sister shopping, and she came over, hitting and cursing. She might not care about face, but I do. I can't afford this embarrassment. We agreed that your salary would be for my bag. And why were you so close to Sandra? Willow retorted angrily. What are you implying? I stared at her in shock. Are you suggesting I'm taking advantage of her? She's your sister. Still a kid. Yeah. We're going to be family soon. Do we need to keep a distance of several meters when walking together? Sandra chimed in. If you're going to be paranoid all the time, how can we live after getting married? Am I supposed to go crazy with you every day? I played along. Turning to leave. This wedding is off. I'll call my dad to cancel the million, transfer. I picked up the phone. Hearing this, all four of them panicked. Jorge, don't be rash. My future mother-in-law quickly tried to stop me. You too, help me calm Jorge down. Sandra rushed over and grabbed my hand. Brother-in-law, don't. Her father also chimed in. Let's talk it out. We're all family. Arguments are normal. Don't be hasty. I had never lost my temper with Willow before. So she was utterly confused, staring at me in disbelief. I pointed at Willow and said to her parents, look at your wonderful daughter, acting like nothing happened. Uncle, men need to keep their dignity. Besides, who I marry makes no difference. Her education doesn't mean squat if she can't even talk decently. Unlike Eva, Sandra's eyes lit up, and Willow finally grasped the situation, hurriedly pushing her parents and sister out the door. You all go out first. We'll handle our own issues. Outside, Sandra called out, Jorge. Her parents said loudly, talk it over well. We're all going to be family. Once they were gone, Willow, crying, came over to me. Honey, what's wrong? What's wrong? I woke up. Willow, do you think I have no choice but to marry you? I said coldly. I, Jorge, have a car, a house, and savings. I won't lack for women. This remark completely sobered Willow. She clung to me. I'm sorry. Honey, I was wrong. I shouldn't have embarrassed you. I was wrong. Please forgive me. Willow cried pitifully, her tears streaming down her face. But these tears weren't for me they were for my money. Crocodile tears wouldn't soften my heart anymore. This isn't just about embarrassment. Last night, when I was drunk, as my future wife, you didn't take care of me. Eva did. I thought I'd buy a bag to thank your sister out of respect for you, and you pick a fight. I accused her sternly. Willow had lost all her previous arrogance. She clung to my leg, begging. It's all my fault. Honey, I swear, I won't do it again. I'll take good care of you and never doubt you again. Please. Honey, we've been together for so long. Can you bear to leave me? Honey, I'm just scared of losing you. Ever since I knew about your family's demolition compensation, I've had nightmares of you finding another woman. I was so scared of losing you that I lost my mind. I might have wedding anxiety. I feel so insecure. Now, I know I was wrong. Please forgive me. Honey, afraid of losing her cash cow, Willow played the emotion card, crying about her supposed true feelings for me. But unfortunately, she never loved me. Her so-called true feelings were just lies. I cursed inwardly, but outwardly. I felt it was enough. Breaking things off completely wouldn't work, as I still had a big surprise for them. The video of your fight spread quickly. My dad messaged me on WeChat saying you've let them down. Despite your high education, your behavior is disgraceful and will bring shame to our family. I can forgive you, but your family needs to sincerely apologize and satisfy my parents. Otherwise, you won't be accepted into our family. Seeing a way out, Willow eagerly nodded. Don't worry, honey. I'll make sure your parents are satisfied. Chapter 11 the Sioux family really went all out this time. Willow convinced her parents to buy first-class round-trip tickets from Beijing for my parents, book them a suite in a five-star hotel in the city center, and arrange meals in a private room at a business restaurant. Willow even hired a business car, with her father acting as the driver, to pick my parents up from the airport and take them to the hotel and then to the banquet hall. At this banquet, 
Willow didn't let her sister come, probably to avoid any unexpected incidents. Her father drank three cups as self-punishment, apologizing for not disciplining his daughter properly. Her mother played the sympathy card, talking about their difficult life and lack of time to educate their daughter. Willow went all out, apologizing and lamenting, using our years of relationship as leverage. Their whole family took turns, presenting a sincere and humble attitude. Her father, getting emotional, insisted on kneeling with the whole family in front of my parents, claiming, we won't get up until you forgive us. Seeing the timing was right, I spoke a few good words for Willow. We had already discussed it as a family. So my dad laid out the conditions for the marriage, the dowry wouldn't be reduced by a penny. However, our family wouldn't organize the wedding in Beijing. The Su family would pay for it. Additionally, they needed to provide a dowry of 200,000. This money would be returned to them later, but they needed to make a show of it. To reassure them, my dad handed me a card with 500,000 on it. Once everything is done, this card will be yours. Willow's family eagerly agreed. In their eyes, as long as they could secure me, the current expense was worth it. My parents stayed in Beijing for a few days before heading back, saying they'd return for the wedding. I told Willow to prepare the wedding well, to make me proud, and show everyone I had found the best wife. Then I used a business trip as an excuse, leaving all the wedding preparations to Willow. However, I hired three private detectives at a high cost to monitor Willow 24-7. With so many trending topics online, Ken's incident had died down, and I needed to deliver a fatal blow. The three detectives were very diligent, sending me photos or videos they took every day. In the 20 days I pretended to be on a business trip, Willow met Ken four times. These adulterous scumbags had truly forgotten their lesson. So next time, I'll leave you with wounds that won't heal. Chapter 12 Because we said the wedding expenses would be reimbursed, the Sioux family spared no effort in organizing the wedding. Willow booked a banquet hall that could accommodate a hundred people and hired a top wedding planning company to decorate the entire hall with exquisite luxury. Using my business trip as an excuse, I neither contributed money nor effort, and even postponed the wedding photos until after the wedding. As compensation, I bought Willow a well-known bridal gown for her to keep as a memento. To prepare for this wedding, Willow maxed out her credit cards, and her parents took out over 200,000 in loans. In a video, Willow pouted and whined to me, Honey, how do you like the decorations? Will they satisfy your parents? I've been so exhausted these past days. You'll have to make it up to me. If it were before, I would have been incredibly moved. But now, I just said, not bad. On the wedding day, I had a slideshow on the big screen showing off the dowry my family supposedly prepared, 1 million in cash, luxury cars, jade jewelry, branded bags. But in reality, none of these items were present. I told the Sioux family that for their sake, my parents would personally bring these items to the wedding so all the relatives and friends could witness how much we valued Willow. As for when my parents would arrive, well, whenever they asked, I just said soon. These ostentatious photos might be tacky, but they were effective. Willow's aunts and uncles were wide-eyed with amazement, all praising her for finding such a good husband. Wearing my custom suit, I faked a smile, dealing with their compliments. Sandra saw me and forced a smile. She wasn't very happy. I spotted Ken sitting at Willow's friend's table. He was dressed up, smiling and chatting with friends. Willow had some nerve. Wasn't she afraid I'd catch on to their affair? Or perhaps she found it more thrilling to have her lover watch as she married her husband. Heh, I'll give you something even more thrilling. Since we were having another wedding in my hometown, only a dozen or so of my relatives and friends were present. But actually, these people were actors I hired. Willow originally only wanted to spend my money, so she never met my relatives. Willow's dad came over and asked, Where are your parents? Why aren't they here yet? My dad said they're on their way but got delayed by a temporary roadblock. They'll be here soon. Oh, they should have come earlier. Don't want to miss the auspicious time. Don't worry, uncle. There's still time. I reassured him. I looked around and saw that everyone who needed to be here was present. It was time to execute my plan. I took Willow to the stage, grabbed the microphone, and said, Dear friends and family, thank you all for coming to celebrate our wedding. To show my gratitude, I've prepared a little game among all our guests. We'll draw one lucky person to receive a 200 gram gold bar with the word fortune engraved on it. I hope to share our good luck with everyone. The Sioux relatives were ecstatic. No one expected a chance to win a gold bar at the wedding. Willow's family beamed with pride. The more generous I appeared, the prouder they felt. The game was simple. Each seat had a number, and Willow would draw a number from the box. Whoever held that number would win. Willow cheerfully drew a number from the box. Number 48. Who's number 48? I chimed in. Who's number 48? Please come up to claim your prize. In fact, after seeing Ken's seat number, the box was filled with slips all marked 48. Ken stood up, looking puzzled, and I urged him to come to the stage, seeing that the winner was Ken. A flicker of panic crossed Willow's face, 
but she quickly composed herself. Oh, it's Mr. Wang. Come on up. Amid the cheers, Ken came up to the stage. At this point, the MC tried to take over, but I waved him off. I went through the formalities of asking Ken to introduce himself, then presented him with the gold bar in a transparent box. Ken's grin nearly reached his ears as he looked at the shiny gold bar. Mr. Wang, I have a special request. Could you say a few words of blessing for us? I handed the microphone to Ken and whispered to Willow. I have a surprise for you coming up. Chapter 13 Willow probably thought I was going to give her something even more valuable than the gold bar. She looked at me excitedly. I smiled and walked off the stage, signaling the staff to start playing the video I had given them earlier. At first, it was a typical love story montage. Moments from my relationship with Willow, edited with music, were being played. It was my final farewell to the sincere love I had given. With the sound of glass shattering, the screen switched to an obscene scene. The big screen displayed a video of Willow and Ken having an affair. In the video, they were naked energetically indulging in each other. You've got guts. Doing this with your husband watching. Isn't it more exciting this way? I don't love him at all. But his family has money and spends it on me. So I keep him. You're the only one I love. Their breathless, disgusting conversation played clearly, echoing throughout the hall. The hall erupted instantly. The adulterous couple stood dumbfounded on stage, still processing what was happening when Willow's dad charged up and kicked them both to the ground. You idiot. Shameless scum. You've disgraced us. Willow's mom screamed, turn it off, turn it off. Willow's dad snapped back to reality and rushed toward me, only to be blocked by my fake relatives. I shouted from behind the crowd, your daughter's lover is trying to run off with the gold bar. He turned and saw Ken trying to flee with the gold bar box. With a roar, he charged at Ken, fueled by rage. He tackled Ken to the ground. Ken tried to fight back, but Sue's relatives swarmed him, delivering a beating. Some did it out of anger, others wanted to grab the gold bar amid the chaos. Willow cried as she tried to protect him. Stop it. Everyone. Stop. Such deep affection. Too bad Ken wanted to shift the blame. Screaming while running away. It's all Willow's fault. She seduced me. She said one man wasn't enough for her. It's your fault for not raising her properly. Why are you hitting me? Willow froze for a moment before screaming and joining the fight against him. Ken. You're shameless. How dare you lie. You filmed me secretly. I'll sue you. It was spectacular. Who needs action movies when you have this real life drama? Amidst the chaos, someone accidentally kicked Ken in his groin, causing him to scream in agony. His scream was music to my ears. Satisfied with the show, I slipped away under the cover of my fake relatives. Willow somehow chased after me, banging on the car window and shouting, Jorge, why are you doing this to me? Looking at her tattered wedding dress and bruised face, I laughed heartily. You bitch, this is your karma for trampling on love. The car sped away, leaving Willow collapsed on the ground, wailing. Her figure grew smaller and smaller, eventually disappearing from my world entirely. Chapter 14 Later, I heard from the actors I hired that Ken ended up in the hospital with fractures and internal bleeding. He was unlikely to have children ever again. With such a serious incident, Willow's dad and several relatives were taken by the police for investigation. They were eventually charged with intentional injury and sent to prison. The hotel also demanded compensation for damages from Willow, an astronomical amount for the Sioux family. Given the spread of this incident, Willow was socially dead. According to her school's announcement, she had been expelled. Serves her right. I rented out the wedding house through an agency, resigned from my job, and went on a tour around the country. During this time, Willow's mom shamelessly called me, crying and begging for mercy, asking me to help pay off their debts they had spent on the wedding, paid for the hotel damages, compensated Ken, and after selling their house, they were still tens of thousands in debt. Go find Ken. Didn't Willow only love him? Besides, I left you the expensive wedding dress and gold bar as compensation. I replied. She was stunned for a moment, then started cursing and crying. Jorge, you're inhuman. You tricked us with fake stuff. I had it checked, and it's worthless. I laughed heartily. Yes, worthless fake goods for a gold-digging liar. Isn't that a perfect match?